Game Time with Boomer Esiason. This week's guest is six-time MLB All-Star and Cincinnati Reds slugging first baseman, Joey Votto. Today's guest is the longtime first baseman and face of the Cincinnati Reds. The 2010 National League MVP is now in his 16th season, hard to believe, and the sweet-swinging six-time All-Star owns a career batting average of 300. It's my pleasure to welcome the great Joey Votto. Joey, welcome to Game Time. Good to be here. Now, you and I share a love of Cincinnati, and it's certainly a privilege to play in front of a loyal fan base. I was quarterbacking the Bengals way back when, when Lou Pinella's Reds swept the heavily favored A's in the 1990 World Series. It was a great time back then. What do you enjoy most about playing in front of those fans? The steadiness. You know, we've had poor stretches, and um, they've been really good about staying, staying with us. I, 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 you see a real drop off in some markets and uh, we've had a drop off, but there's a real base that sticks it out with us. So I admire, I really admire that about, about uh, our team, excuse me, our city. Um, they, they're, they want good things for the Reds. I mean, the Bengals just went to the Super Bowl, but I think there's a significant uh, percentage of the population in Cincinnati that, that really wants to be proud of their baseball team. And, um, you know, dissatisfaction is is certainly their right uh and and hopefully we turn the corner and, and and get and satisfy them give them exactly what they're looking for you know one of the sweetest moments i think that has happened this season is when you befriended a cubs fan behind uh you know the on deck circle you're sitting there and you're you're talking to this little kid and the next thing you know you get up there and you hit a home run and you go back after you cross the plate and you high five this little kid who's wearing a cubs uniform and i'm wondering what did that kid say to you before you got up there and what did you say to him after you hit the home run there was a fan who um was was on me like giving me the gears and uh i turn around to the fan and i said i couldn't hear you what did you say and he goes would you say and I go, no, seriously, I couldn't hear you. What'd you say? And he goes, what'd you say? And I go, dude, I want to play with you. I want to reply back. Tell me what you tell me what you said. And he goes, what'd you say? And I mutter so- something to myself. And I'm guessing this is kind of a, uh, anyways, I mutter something to myself about him. Right. And, and I shouldn't have said it. And I look down and I see this little boy sitting right next to me, you know, with this face like, <laughs> you know, and uh, with this old face, and I, I, I walk up to him. I say, "Hey, I'm sorry for saying that. I feel bad saying that. I know better than to say that about him. Uh, I, I just want to let you know, like, I shouldn't have said that." And he goes, "It's okay." And, <laughs> and I go, "Hey, all right. Well, thank you for saying that." If I hit a home run, I'm going to come back here and we're going to celebrate together. So the next at bat, I, I ended up hitting a, a double or a single or something like that. And then a bat later, I hit the home run and I spot him and I give him a high five, a double high five. And he was all, you know, and his father ended was sitting right next to him. And he goes, it's OK. It's OK, you know, on, on what I said and the apology and everything like that. And then when I came back later, his father was like, you don't know what you just did. Uh, we really appreciate it, and the kid was super happy about it. Um, but it's it it wasn't that <laughs> kind. Of, <laughs> it wasn't that innocent, but it, it turned out to be great. Innocent. It right. wasn't that sweet, you know. I'm I'm certainly not that sweet a person. So, Joey Bato grew up in Toronto. His father was a chef, and his mother was a sommelier. But rather than following their culinary footsteps, young Joey feasted on a steady diet. Believe it or not, folks, of wiffle ball pitching from his brother, Tyler. Now, you used to save up to buy buckets worth of wiffle balls, and I need to ask you if your brother actually enjoyed pitching to you, and would you recommend this to young kids to do this to become the hitter that you became ultimately as a major leaguer? Yeah, I'm going to have to correct one part. All of that is true aside from the brother liking it. He couldn't stand it. (laughs) And, um, you know, I, I, I remember dragging him out. He was five years younger than me, so I'm 13 or I'm 15, 18, 17, whatever, and he's you know, a kid, a, a boy, and he's like, I want to go play with my friends. I want to go play video games or whatever. And I'm like, come on, just, you know, and I would drag him out and he acquiesced. And um, I told him, you know, I'm going to take care of you one day. 
and I didn't really mean it. I didn't really mean it. <laughs> um, but uh, would I recommend it? It worked for me. Um, I needed to get outside. I wanted to get better at at, at, at hitting. Um, I, it worked for me, so I have no I have no complaints. You know, I, I yeah, I love those times. Looking back, he and I joke about it because um, he hated it so much. But now. Um, when we talk about it, he still says, I hated it so much, but it, it was good spending time with you. So just brotherly wise, it was great. Yeah, you were obviously a big Blue Jays fan growing up. And I'm just oh, yeah. wondering, when you were 10 years old, this is when Joe Carter hits that walk off home run in the World Series. Do you remember that day and what that was like? Yes, of course, I remember that day, you know, without getting my parents in trouble, they left us after the home run and went out in the city. And here we are two boys like hanging out the house. <laughs> like, where heard our parents go to go, you know, join the party downtown. But um, of course, you know, it was the, maybe the most emotional moment of my um, of my childhood. You know, Joe Carter stepping up to bat against uh, Mitch Williams, I believe. Yes. And he hits, I think that's he he hits like flicks a, a a slider down and hits it over the left field wall and i remember thinking like is this real you know is this real but it's funny since then you know you build up this expectation of of things like that happening more often but you don't realize how rare it is and how special it is so yeah you know you also had a legendary tryout with the reds i was reading about this and i was trying to understand exactly how this happened where it happened and did you actually use the Ken Griffey swagger going up into the uh, into the batter's box as you're getting ready to try out for the Reds? So Johnny Bench was there and Ken Griffey Jr. was there at this particular tryout. So I'm guessing Ken was was not uh, was on the IL at the time. Right. And Johnny was in town. Um, and so I'm Johnny's I was catching at the time and Johnny Bench was working with me. I was throwing down to second base and he was giving me feedback and it was well, I mean, how lucky am I? I'm 18 years old and a new catcher working with the greatest catcher of all time. Very clearly the greatest catcher of all time. And um, my favorite player as a boy, as a teen, was uh, was Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, everybody tried to copy his swing. And I I had my own swing, but every now and then I'd try his swing. It didn't work for me, but it worked for him. But I I was in the batting cage and there's – imagine – being in this, tur this this shell batting cage, and there's 25 scouts, you're 18 years old, you're not a big prospect, nobody knows who you are, nobody cares who you are, mm -hmm. and in walks Ken Griffey Jr. to watch, and you spot him, and all of a sudden you decide, hey everyone, who is this? And I started emulating Ken Griffey, Ken Griffey Jr. And I hit like one or two ground balls on his swing, and one of the scouts said, he wouldn't do that. <laughs> and I felt so small and Ken laughs and everybody else laughs. And I ended up finishing the, the, the session, but I played, I, I, I had a good session, which is I think the reason why they ended up drafting me with the, with their second pick. We'll return and look back at some of the triumphs and challenges that distinguish the career of the great Joey Votto right after these messages. It's game time with Boomer Esiason. This past May, Joey Votto tested positive for COVID for the second time in two years. But unlike the first go round at the end of spring training in 2021, Votto asked to be assigned to a short rehab stint with the Dayton Dragons, one of the eight teams he played for during his minor league days. And, you know, Joey, what did you learn from the first bout of COVID that you had? And why did you ask for that rehab stint? Uh, uh, the first bout, um, it was just, I was surprised I had COVID, um, as far as learning anything, nothing, you know, you just try to get well, uh, the rehab stint was a byproduct of not, um, having enough time running, swinging, being aggressive on defense. Um, I was mostly on the couch or in bed. And so, you know, I just needed to come back and get to full speed, you know, I, game has just gotten so much faster and if if you don't if you don't prepare physically especially the place i'm in in my career if i'm not up to speed i risk injury um i'm well i feel good um 
I feel strong and healthy in terms of in terms of you know competing. But um, if I if I don't do anything for a while, I risk I feel like I risk injury, which is why I went down to both the uh, Dayton level and, and Louisville level this year and got some at bats. And I'm really glad I did. You know, I I started off poorly this year. I wanted to make sure I was in a good place offensively. I have to come back and do my job. I'm still in that frame of mind now. I've, I've got a lot to overcome with my poor start. But uh, that's that's the way the game works. You have to keep going. You know, I want to shift gears for a moment because you just talked about your frame of mind. And, you know, less than an air, a year after your big league uh, debut, your dad unexpectedly died in 2008 at the age of 52. So how did you come to terms with that short term and what impact did that ultimately have on your career moving forward? Uh, um, short term, I was in shock. I mean, my father was the center of my universe. I mean, he was, um, yeah, he was um, like a, a very prominent figure in my life mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. So it was a shock to my system. Um, I would say it made me angry for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I think that was probably just being distraught, feeling lost and being sad. And it showed up in anger. And um, that's just, you know, that's just how I reacted. And I probably, if I'm truthful with myself, I think I'm probably, probably it hardened me in a way um, for my career, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade that for my father. So all right, thanks for sharing that with us, Joey. I know that's not easy. We're going to pause for a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we'll get Joey Votto's thoughts on Teddy Ball Game. Stay with us as game time continues in a moment. Welcome back to Game Time with Boomer Esiason. Welcome back, everyone, as we continue with Joey Votto. Now, I know that you grew up and you had a poster of Ted Williams over your bed when you were in the minor leagues. You always carried around a copy of his classic 1970 book, The Science of Hitting. Now, how would you distill his philosophy of hitting and yours, and how does it mold together? Well, I, I, I wouldn't say it's mine, I, and he wouldn't say it's his. You know, there, it's passed down. Uh, it's not that complicated. You know, you have to get a good pitch to hit. Um, you have to be fearless at the plate. You have to think with the pitcher. Um, you know, it's interesting nowadays with the, the style of pitching, it's really, it can, you can think with the pitcher, but it can be difficult at times because of how fast the, the pitching style has become. You know, when I first came up, I remember facing Tom Glavin in a Mets uniform at, at Shea Stadium. And I remember needing to think with him because when he pitched, the plate was much wider, much wider, because he made it wider with, with where, his com where he commanded his fastball. So he would make a ball have two-seam action on it where it would appear as if it's going to be outside, but come back and clip the edge of the plate. That was the way it felt previously. Now it feels a lot more like a heavyweight fight when you're out there. I'm facing Garrett Colt. He throws 100 miles an hour. He's got fantastic secondary stuff. He's one of the best pitchers in the game. And if I guess with him, or if I don't, if I don't prepare for the maybe the best or one of the best fastballs in the world, I, I run the risk of getting knocked out. So I have to approach the bat as if I'm going to try to knock him out. It's really hard to think with with someone that throws that hard. And most of the league has has this style where they're very explosive. You know, for a guy who's been around for 16 years, I hear so much about launch angle over the last five or six years, analytics and all of that other stuff. Have you changed like your overall approach over the last 16 years to kind of meet what the analytics are saying? You know, it's it, it, so the I, when I hear um, commentary on like exit velocity and launch angle, those are just those are just things we described in different terms. It would be like a, a hard line drive or a long fly ball. 
and that's the way we practice. So it wasn't anything that uh, it, n- neither of those terms are guiding us necessarily. Um, I've had to change because my style previously was much more control. It was it was as if I was you know hitting uh, if I was a, to use golfing, hitting my first drive on the on the fairway, uh, and then trying to put the ball either laying up or hitting it on the green, but control, 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 making sure now I'm trying to, you know, DeChambeau, (laughs) crush it anywhere, hit it as close to the green as I possibly can. Rory McIlroy, hit as far as I possibly can. Take big risks. uh, uh, Accuracy be darned. And so for me, my game has changed like, like significantly over the last like five years or so. I actually enjoy this version because this is the type of hitting style that I grew up wanting to be. Um, but it's, it's tough. It's, it's tough, you know, especially with, uh, especially with the shift and especially with the pitching style, but it's fun. I love it. And I love, I love the challenge. I really enjoy hitting still. We'll take one final break and then we will return to engage Taki two in a little game of pepper right after this. You're watching Game Time with Boomer Esiason. We're back with Joey Votto, who's been called the most interesting man in baseball, a ball player who, as the saying goes, plays chess while the rest of us are playing checkers. So right now, the mentally challenged game that we want to play in our own version of Pepper there, Joey, is I'm going to fire a question. You feel that as quickly as you can, and it's uh, true or false. Are you ready to go? Oh, yeah. All right, since you had Buckeye trees in your Toronto backyard, you were destined to play for your entire big league career in the state of Ohio. True or false? Uh, False. Okay. The best player in the NBA is? Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. There you go. That's right. True or false? You are a high school quarterback. Momentarily. No, false. All right. No boomer. What is your favorite? No boomer, right? All right, true or false? In your spare time, you like to mop floors. Oh, that is true. Why do you like to mop floors? It's probably some sort of like um, some sort of obsession with clean floors. I'm not sure. I love it. True or false? All right, mopping floors. That's a weird one. True or false? (laughs) Hockey (laughs) Hockey Hall of Famer Bobby Orr once reached out to congratulate you for winning the 2010 MVP award. I think true. False? Uh Uh-uh. Oh, no. Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky. Yes. How do you not know that? Well, I don't, I, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to say false. And then he did and be, and forget it because I mean, Bobby is maybe the greatest hockey player of all time. I thought Gretzky was the greatest of all time. I said, maybe they're both, I took you ask them both. They both say it's a, it's a conversation. So. It is a conversation. True or false, Mike Mike Trout is the best player in baseball. True. Yes. Uh, being mired in a batting slump is like what? A labyrinth. <laughs> yes, that's true. Apple could refer to a fruit or to a computer company, but what did Apple mean to Toronto Blue Jay fans in the mid-1990s? Oh, Apple Autoglass. It's a commercial. Very good. Pick of the crop. Yes. Yes. All right, true or false? Your dog, Maris, actually ate the baseball from your first hit in the majors. Yes, I gave it him. That's I gave it to him right after the game. It's true. And he tore it to shreds, right? Oh, happily. I love that dog. Good. And final one, true or false? You've said that a second career you want to drive a school bus? True. Can you explain that, please? Well, you get the big wheel. You get the big wheel yes. and you get the big horn. Ha, ha. You get the <laughs> best of both worlds. So you get, you're in real control and you get to take good care of uh, kids. So, yeah, I trust myself with kids. So I, uh, I want to make sure that they're safe and sound and getting to and from. I'm a safe driver, you know. Yes. But I probably you are inch- I probably won't you- be doing that. I'll be doing some I'll be doing something like what you're doing. Uh, maybe you will be. So let me ask you this. You're in your age 38 season. Last question. How do you envision this whole thing ending for you on the field? 
Uh, I think I'm going to play a bit more. I feel great. I'm going to finish off strong this year. I'm going to finish off really strong this year, and there's going to be n- no conversation about retirement. I'm going to just keep playing. So, yeah. All right. I appreciate it. Joey Botto, thank you so much. It's thank our pleasure you. to have you on Game Time. And to all of you for watching on Boomer Esiason, and I'll see you again real soon right here on Game Time. Hey, Ozzy, what do you think about me getting a diamond, a diamond tooth? Go for it. Okay, Why there not? we go. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, why not? Okay, all right, there you go. There you go. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, they told me to ask ask you. I, I said I said I wasn't gonna ask you. You're you're much too young. I'm I'm midlife midlife crisis guy. Go for it.